right, so here's my 2007 Civic. It's an FA5. That's the chassis code, I guess, for a four-door SI. But, uh... The car is basically a four-door front-wheel drive S2000 and AP1 because it revs to eight grand. And with the Honda data, it'll rev to like 8600 with the stock cams and everything, which is damn near what a AP1 S2000 runs like. So this with full bolt-ons is like pretty similar to my AP1 S2000. This doesn't have full bolt on yet, but I can imagine what it'd be like with just like a little bit more power. It'd be close. Um, this has right now just a K&N intake, and it's just a hot air short ram intake. It does have that tube there to blow some cold air on it, but it has that. I just did a tune up to it with OEM and GK plugs, and I got a NVIDIA Q300 exhaust coming. See, it's a four-seater S2000, basically. I mean, just front-wheel drive. I had an S2000 AP1 as a daily. And it just kind of sucked as a daily because the car was really small and, like, impractical. It's a good car to have as, like, a weekend car, and you could daily drive it. But to daily drive it every day, it's just... I don't know. I did it for a couple years of mine, but I didn't drive it in the winter much. But in, it's in Pennsylvania. It's 42 degrees out right here right now, so it's kind of cold out. So I'm gonna sit in the car and do this video. But uh, it's got the uh, K20 Z3, I guess it is. And uh, let me see here. It's got the Alpine touchscreen head unit with apple carplay it's probably gonna kick the bluetooth if i do this but you can see it's got the 8000 rpm red line it actually goes past 8000 and it's stock which i don't know why but it does it goes to like 82 or 300 it looks like on that tack anyway but you got the heads up display whatever two-tier dash um, tells you see right, it's actually 41 degrees. But it's got the Apple CarPlay on here. It's an Alpine. Has aftermarket door speakers, tweeters, and it's got a JL10 in the back, in the trunk. But it's got sunroof and all that stuff. The car uh, handles nice, actually, for a front-wheel drive car. I'm not really a big front-wheel drive car fan, but, uh, I've had some before and I've driven these before there my one friend had one in 06 when it was like brand new it was a coupe si and we used to drive that thing all the time ripping it around back in the day and that thing was fun but uh they handle good for a front-wheel drive car um it basically motor wise though like I said if you do full bolt ones to one of these it feels like an ap1 s2000 it's just front wheel drive and a little bit heavier not a lot i think an s2000 is like 27 or 800 pounds at least this is like 2900 so it's a little bit uh heavier than an s2000 but it's a four-door way more practical the k20 responds good to mods too the f20 basically stock feels like it has full bolt-ons with one of these in my opinion it feels like they put a better header on it. They put free or flowing exhaust, a free or flowing intake, and just the setup of it and the tune and everything, and it revving to 9,000. An F20 and a K20, I mean, they're pretty similar looking motors. I'm not really sure about the internal specs of them, but they're both 2.0s. They look very similar. They're both timing chain motors. <laughs> they're pretty similar, just front wheel drive and a rear wheel drive version. But a K20, I guess, is like, like I said, it almost feels like this is like with full bolt ons, this thing will feel like a stock, maybe exhaust on a maybe with exhaust only, like a AP1S2000 feels at least that's how mine was. Mine had intake exhaust, 
and a tune i think so it was full bolt ons but that thing was definitely would smoke this thing this with full bolt ons should be very similar though to a stock ap1 s2000 i would say so we'll find out i got the cap back 2.75 inch i think it's 70 millimeter nvidia q300 coming tomorrow throw that on order a Honda data for it turn the red line up to like or the rev limiter up to like 86 or whatever and i don't know if i'm gonna mess with the VTEC. i kind of like the fun factor of it just being like a dog and then it's like bam like bam just hits VTEC all at once at six i don't really care about if it makes it any faster in the lower rpms i'll just drive it in the higher rpms if i want to go fast drive it gives me a bigger window then to go down the highway and get good gas mileage i don't want to be in <laughs> the first stage of VTEC cruising down the highway for ever and i can be like i don't know i could i think they said it at like 45 or something 4800 the first stage or whatever i don't even know how it like two stages of VTEC even really works but i don't want to be going down the highway i go fast a lot just cruising and i don't want to be cruising at like 90 100 mile an hour and i'm like in and out of VTEC or like in the first stage of VTEC. it just for me it doesn't make sense plus i like the dramaticness of like the car going boo, like a stock civic ex up until you hit six grand and then it's like an si i can still get good gas mileage i'm getting like 26 average with it and 26 average and uh so that's not bad you do you're supposed to run premium fuel on it there too that's another thing i was thinking about looking into was doing a 87 octane tune to it to uh cut down on fuel cost and then have that as my two maps I have 87 and one and then a high performance like 93 and the other i'm not sure how honda it works but like my truck is a third gen toyota tacoma and uh that has two two tunes it's you can you have to do it with the computer you have to hook your laptop up to it but you can uh i have a orange virus tuning on it and you can switch it i have an 87 performance and then a 90 or a 90 whatever high octane performance tune so like i have those two tunes that i bought so i can just switch it back and forth if i wanted to drive it and have more power for a couple of weeks i could put that high octane tune in it gives it like 10 more horsepower or something i think but <coughs> that's a direct injection motor so with this maybe i can put the honda out. i think you can have two tunes too hopefully i'm not sure i don't know anything i'm not a honda guy i'm a nissan guy this is i'm a honda daily driver oem plus type of person like i like don't mind hondas and i like hondas but like i'm not going to build a honda to be a race car i have a 240 with an rb and i have a 180 sx with a sr20 i don't need a fast front wheel drive car in my life but na's fun i like na hondas that's what I like. AP1 S2000s are fun, even AP2s. And like these cars, they rev high and you can just rip through some gears with them. So it breaks up being a boring daily driver like just getting a regular Honda would be. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Just a short little review on this thing. It's a nice little car. I mean, I just got the windows tinted, I think 20% the whole way around and stuff. It's not bad but i'll do an update on it once i get the honda on it and the q300 exhaust hopefully that exhaust isn't too loud and journey because i don't want a loud exhaust people are like oh you can't have a quiet high flow exhaust but i'm pretty sure that's what that exhaust is so we'll see i had nvidia on my uh, s2000 too and that was catless and everything and that thing wasn't that quiet but didn't sound bad i'm gonna try and keep this quiet though so it just like blends in with civilization and i can drive it and not draw a lot of attention but yeah i'll do an update on this thing once i get the exhaust on and then i'm eventually going to get a honda out of four too then that'll probably be it for this car maybe a couple suspension mods just to make it handle a little better tighten it up a little bit maybe a little different alignment in the front to rip some corners on the road with and everything but that's probably about it all right later